I'm going to do a series of two or three videos on mechanical versus dialectical materialism. And I tend to think there's a lot to be learned from what's disparagingly called mechanical materialism. And that a lot of what is called dialectical materialism is a hangover of idealist Hegelian influence. So I will develop that in the videos. This is the introductory video and I'm going to briefly cover the history of the term dialectical materialism and talk about how it became an orthodoxy of communist philosophy. The first point to realise is that dialectical materialism doesn't come from Marx. It is presented as communist orthodoxy. It's presented as part of Marxism-Leninism. It was official ideology in the Soviet Union and to an extent still is in the People's Republic of China. But Marx never claimed to support dialectical materialism. Instead, the philosophy of dialectical materialism was invented by someone else, a guy called Dietzken. He was a 19th century German philosopher who was a prominent social democrat. He invented dialectical materialism and he had a big philosophical impact on the social democratic rank and file within Germany and internationally. He's not very much read now, but in the late 18th, early 20th century, books by Dietzken were widely translated and widely published and had a big impact within the socialist movement internationally. I give a list of some of his most uh, prominent books to the right. Now, at that time, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, there was a great deal of hostility to what was termed the mechanical theory or mechanical view of philosophy in German philosophy and in German natural philosophy, that is to say physics. They were strongly opposed to the atomistic mechanical idea, which was seen as being something from the Anglo-Saxon world. And Mach was at that time still very influential and promoting non-mechanical ideas of heat, energetic ideas of heat. In contrast to Mach, Boltzmann and Maxwell, who are now seen as the founders of the theory of heat and the theory of um, statistical mechanics, were viewed with suspicion. Um, their claim that atoms existed was disputed strongly. So there was a lot of pressure in that environment for someone to say, well, I may be a materialist, but at least I'm not one of those mechanical ones. I got this added ingredient, dialectical materialism, which makes me superior to the mechanical materialists like Boltzmann and Maxwell, who were being um, strongly attacked in the German intellectual community. So the apparent trajectory that people think happened was that you start off with Dietzken inventing it, then it was taken up by Plekhanov, Lenin then says some things along these lines in the middle of the um, First World War and then Stalin writes his pamphlet Dialectical and Historical Materialism which is a chapter on, on in the history of the CPSU and this then becomes the orthodox ideology in the USSR and it's actually not just Stalinists who adhere to it Trotskyists adhere to it too. So it becomes the orthodox 
communist philosophy. But the actual trajectory is a lot more complicated than that. The actual, the actual, actual trajectory is a bit more complicated. So the stuff about Dietzke and Plakhanov Lenin is okay. But then you've got to consider what happens after the Socialist Revolution in Russia. You have a working class government formed, but the community of philosophers or the community of professors is the same as what existed beforehand. And they have their existing ideas of things, but they have to somehow accommodate these to the new government. So you get trends arising in philosophy which formally adhere to what it is seen as a combination of Marxism and Dietzkin's dialectical materialism, which are seen as the official philosophy of the government. <coughs> and you get two conflicting strands developing in academic philosophy, depending on whether people came from the natural sciences or a training basically in idealist philosophy. So you get the Hegelian De Boronist school and you get a school which are called the mechanists who are drawing on natural science and you get a big controversy between them as to who's the official interpreter of dialectics and dialectical materialism in the 20s 30s and then once you get the rapid socialization of the economy the planned economy etc there is a imposition of criticisms of all sorts of um, trends in the academic world who are potentially seen as hangovers to the old uh, order. And you get criticism of what's called Menshevising idealism, presumably because some of the professors who are being criticised had been supportive of the Mensheviks. And it's after this period of criticism of Menshevising idealism that we get the, the sort of two canonical texts of the late 1930s, Mao's On Contradiction in 1937 and Stalin's Dialectical and Historical Materialism in 1938. So these are both post- the criticism of Menshevising idealism. It's particularly clear in the case of Mao's text. Both Mao and Stalin's texts come out after the critique of the influence of Hegelian idealism through de Boren. And these works must be understood in that context. And this is made quite explicit in Mao's introduction to On Contradiction, where he says, the criticism to which the idealism of the de Boren school has been subjected in Soviet philosophical circles in recent years has aroused great interest in us. De Boren's idealism, which has exerted a very bad influence on the communist, Chinese Communist Party, and it cannot be said that the dogmatic thinking in our party is unrelated to the approach of this school. Our present study of philosophy should therefore have the eradication of dogmatist thinking as its main objective. So you have to see Mao's on contradiction as a polemic against the influence of Hegelian idealism, which he's terming dogmatism. It's also possible that it was part of the struggle against the Trotskyist tendency within the CCP. And I said earlier that dialectical materialism was seen as the Stalinist orthodoxy, but it was also very much a Trotskyist orthodoxy. And there's some controversy over whether a book called dialectical materialism 
and attributed to Mao, or a text called Dialectical Materialism, and attributed to Mao, was really written by him. Mao apparently said he didn't recall ever writing such a text, and it's been suggested that the text was actually written by Soviet-trained Deborahists within the CCP, who then passed it off as a work of Mao himself. In the next two videos, I will cover a critical examination of the theses in Stalin's dialectical and historical materialism. And after that, I'll go on to Mao's on contradiction. <laughs>